not music. Party's not a party's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minutes! Greetings citizens of Gotham and welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns, the show that falls minute by minute through Tim Burton's wonderful sequel, One Minute at a Time. I am one of your hosts, John Parker. Uh, I am the other host, Niall McGowan. All right. Hey, hey, here we are. We're back. <laughs> it's hump We're day. We're back again. <laughs> Whoop, hump day. And we are joined once again by our very special guest. We have filmmaker, director, Natasha Kamani. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me again. Well, this is Minute 29. The minute starts with pants-soiling terror, and it ends with a feline frenzy. Oh, wait. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <That's like> a... <laughs> well, you know, I, I was hoping other people would say, yes, that happened to me too. Uh, now I know I'm alone. In There's no shame in that. Christopher Walken is very scary. He's very, we were saying he's very sexy, of course, last minute. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you could be both, I suppose. Versatile. <laughs> yeah. He can, cha- he can change it as quickly as he changes the timbre of his voice when he goes from, oh, I'm talking like this, and no, I'm talking like this. That's, <sighs> that's, how, that's, that's the walk and flip. That's what they call that. Well, did, didn't we decide he was the pixies of actors? Oh, that's, Quiet to loud. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Or did we do that for the next week? I can't remember. <laughs> well, when you're editing these minutes, Niall, you can make that judgment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them know we recorded some out of sequence. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, we are back here with Max as he's looming over Selena yeah, in an intimidating fashion. Mm. It also kind of looks like he's about to kiss her. Now, w- would you like him to kiss you, either of you? <laughs> Not with that I- hair. No, sir. I don't know. That's doing it for me. <laughs> oh, I think I love I love the hair. Like um, again, but no, it's just because I, you know, a man receded hairline in my early twenties. So like, I've not had proper hair for like a long time. So like, any hair I see, I'm like, oh, look at it. <laughs> so, but uh, memory. But but uh, no, totally. I'll be all like, oh, if I if I could get away with that, I would totally have just a Max Shrek wig on all the time. Maybe you should. Great volume. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm. Again, probably has his own line of friggin' moose or something like that. Maximus. Maximus. <laughs> that was terrible. But yeah, he is kind of leaning in in this lecherous, lecherous boss way, which I think is yeah. genius. Um, he, they're just playing with so many different lines here with this relationship. And uh, Christopher Walken just plays it so well. He's completely committed to okay, now we're playing with this line, now we're playing with that line, and then it's all a joke. He kind of pulls back, and her and the laugh is always kills me. Oh, it's great. Because his first thing, like, he's like, oh, yeah, what, what a prankster he is. But then she, like, she's laughing, but she still seems scared to me. Mm. It's one of those, like, ner- nervous, exhausted laughs of just like, oh, because it was so tense, and now it's like, now it's all it's all kind of deflated. She's like, oh, like it's it's kind of flooding out of her more. Like it's it's probably almost like a, it's, well, it is a laugh of relief, but it is more just like a, you know, it's almost as if her body couldn't take being any more tense, so it just has to get out everything in the form of this laugh, pretty much. It's fun to see Michelle Pfeiffer just um, uh, just be nerdy and be kind of like a geek, um, and not really you know she's always so glamorous and she is beautiful and they make her so gorgeous all the time so it's fun to see her as selena um just kind of being completely uh uninterested in how she's looking to camera i guess um yeah she's she's great i'm just watching the sequence again (laughs) (laughs) now we like that they um they try and dress her down and make her geeky and nerdy and it's great for the character but Let's be honest, she's so stunning. You can't do that to, to Michelle Fox. Yeah. <laughs> like, she still looks great. I actually like uh, her fashion a lot when she's still Selena. I love it. I love it. Niall, you're not a fan, are you? I think this jacket, or whatever the hell it is, is fantastic. It's like a vest. It's like a tweed vest thing over the jacket. I just don't get what it yeah. is. It's like, what? yeah, what is it? It's like, 
it's very big and very frumpy. It's very eighties actually for considering very eighties yeah, cut. Yeah. It could. It's not quite a tweed jacket because it's got short sleeves. And it's like, well, who would buy that? That doesn't make any sense to me. But me. <laughs> That's the kind of thing is, I'm a man who loves some tweed. Oh, multiple tweed jackets. But hey, you cut those sleeves off. I'm like, what is this? What's the point of this? It's not providing the entire tweed service to me. So, Very true. <laughs> it took my attention. I'm assuming Tim Burton again, because we've talked multiple times in the first movie about his constant referencing to Dracula and vampiric motifs and whatnot. And then... Uh, in this movie here, like you mentioned, oh, it looks like he's almost going in for a kiss. And it, you could almost inter- take that in a very dark direction and be like, it could be leaning into maybe Selena thinks this is going to go into full on assault, which is very, like, a very unpleasant direction to go. No, I think that's definitely there. Like he, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't actually intend to do that. No. Not, not saying it's right, but it, it, he's not actually planning to do that. But he's using kind of the, the implication of that to scare her. The thing it also reminded me of, though, just that way he leans in, it's like it's almost like a vampire about to go in for the neck, which really, sh- mm. and it's, of course, that's very appropriate because we did mention Max Shrek is obviously uh, it's a callback to the actor Max Shrek who was uh, who played Count, Count Orlock in Nosferatu and, and was an actual vampire. Well, that's the thing, yeah. For uh, yeah. so apparently for so many years, this is kind of built up to the fact now, like urban legend that uh, back in the day people thought that he was an, a legitimate vampire because he wasn't... He, he apparently did mostly stage work, so you didn't see him in a lot of movies. So people like, Max Shrek, that was an actual vampire. They got they hired an actual vampire. <laughs> and of course, now in this internet age where that could be easily with, debunked within minus 0.5 seconds. Kind of like, like Have before, you guys before. seen the, the photos, though, of him like waiting to, before, like in between scenes when he's still in makeup? Have you seen these? No, I don't think I have, actually don't think so yeah they're gorgeous but he's still in makeup and it's terrifying he's just like nosferatu sitting like with a coffee cup next to him or something <laughs> <laughs> brilliant i love shots like that where you see like i don't know danny devito as the penguin just reading the newspaper oh, we did but we put up one on twitter a while back that got a lot like one of, one of our most liked photos ever was michelle pfeiffer in the catwoman suit with a cup of coffee and a big duffel coat on just hanging about the set have you guys seen the cat suit, the actual, the real costume? It's tiny. It's insane. They they had to essentially, I don't know if we, have we mentioned this yet now? I'm not sure. Oh, I don't think we have because we haven't got to it, but I don't care. I'll mention it. Um, they essentially have to cut her out of it mm. like continuously. Like most days to get it off, cut it yeah. off. I think they had the thing of it was, they went through 60 cat suits, the entire shoot, a thousand dollars a piece. So like yeah, so that's sixty thousand dollars just to get that. But that's the thing though, and, and, you know the the whole legend of Count Orlock or Max Shrek as well. Because you know, maybe a lot of people do know this, but there was actually a film made of that with the Shadow it's one of the of my Vampire. Favorite movies. It's so good. Yeah, but it, it's got a because um, you know as as is our way in this show, it's got a lot of uh, little you know it's all connected things because it obviously has Willem Dafoe playing Max Shrek in it. Of course, Willem Dafoe was in the line to play the Joker in the last movie. Uh, yeah. Apparently, uh, that his performance as uh, Max Shrek secured him the part of Norman Osborn in Spider-Man as well. So there you go. Let's shout out to Spider-Man a minute. Wait. And we also briefly mentioned because uh, F.W. Murnau, the director of Nosferatu in real life, is played in that movie by uh, John Malkovich, who Michelle Pfeiffer has just, at this point in her life, has just had a brief relationship with uh, Malkovich, and Ozzy starred in Dangerous Liaisons with him, but that's how they got together. So yeah, there's a lot of little tenuous connections between that movie, Nosferatu, and Batman Returns. <laughs> so. Shadow of the Vampire is so good. That's one of my most favorite movies about movies. And the, the, the third act is just absolutely bonkers. It just goes completely <laughs> off the rails, and it's it's just great. John Malkovich is, just nails it. Willem Dafoe, everyone is just great. I think you're not getting any, any spoilers for people, but it, it, I think the end posits that the, the death of Count Lorlock on screen was the way they actually had to kill the vampire because he was just killing everybody in the village that they were filming in and stuff. Yeah, and the, cat, like, and the crew. The thing is, the guy's played very, like, in a very comedic fashion, though. Like, Murnau has to keep coming to the vampire saying, like, look, my freaking cameraman's gone missing. Do you know anything about this? Like, no, I, I couldn't possibly say anything. <laughs> but, um, but anywho... <laughs> 
Where, where, where are we in the minute, actually? Oh, yeah, because we've got the... Um, yeah, so the... It turns out, yeah, it was, uh, it was all a joke. Max Shrek's a real jokester today. Uh, don't you hate it when people do that? I, I, I've never liked people who just completely wind you up mm. like this. Everything's a joke. They'll be really aggressive, and then it's like, oh, I'm joking, though. <laughs> Can you just stop, please? Like, like, my nerves were a wreck when I used to briefly live with the former guests and future guests of the show, Gary Gavigan, because he has this habit of everything you say to him, his response will be a joke. So you ask him the most simple question, he'll be, he'll have to respond with like, a, you know, a, a lie that's a joke, pretty much. Like, be like, you never oh, know. You... you never know what's real and what's not. Yeah. It, it's most yeah. like you can't have a straight conversation. You're just like, dude, just... Like, when I ask for a spoon, just give me a spoon. Don't give me a whole story and then, <laughs> about why you can't give it to me. <laughs> because I know you're going to give it to me eventually anyway, so just hurry up and do it. And of course, yeah, I think I mentioned it on the show previously, too. It's like I have a friend of mine who every time I've, – I've turned down lifts from him. Like, you know, he's like, oh, do you want to lift somewhere? I'll be like, no, because I know he's going to do that thing. Of like, you go to the car door, and then he starts to drive away, and then he stops, and you have to oh. – it's every time. Oh, every time God. he does – so I'd rather it's like no, I'll ra- I'd rather pay for a bus than go and uh, get a free <laughs> lift from you. Cause I, I I hate it. I hate it. I went to school with people who did stuff like that all the time, and I couldn't bear to be around them. I'll be honest. <laughs> it's pretty obnoxious. But I mean, the question is too: Why does Shrek feel the need to to play around this way? Because he could just kill her at that point. But he yeah. kind of yeah. like a cat playing with a mouse or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but that, that could be maybe, maybe Max Shrek is a weird like he's a cat man like <laughs> he just likes oh cat man he's just sadistic he's just you know yeah the, 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 I thought that was a good point there is literally no reason for him to to, to pretend it's a joke like it's just he's just I being a, a a bad guy he's being a real bad guy <laughs> I think he actually he kind of enjoys it. Like when he when he does the deed, shall we say? Um, I get the impression that it's not the first time he's done this because he not well. I mean, it's probably the first time he's pushed someone out a window, but um, it's not the first time he's killed someone because it doesn't seem to phase him that much. Oh no, no, that, uh, you know we talked about the um, what do you call him again? Fred Atkins, his old partner, who his hand hands. Oh, of course, him. yeah, yeah, good point, actually. But but I got the impression with that that he didn't physically do it. Well, the thing, we do have the whole thing of like he, apparently he does wear the gloves in the movie as a symbol of like Max Shrek never gets his hands dirty, so he would he would have people to do it for him. But like um, I I could have you know I, I I'd say he probably has like on, on his way up. It depends because we don't get enough of a backstory about where the Shrek money comes from. Like we know in the original Dan Waters draft. Max Shrek was Oswald Cobblepot's brother. But this version, I think, rightfully gets rid of that. It's like, you don't need that there at all. But we are kind of left with this, like, is he a self-made man? Or is this, like, I've inherited... The, the Shreks have been in Gotham for... I always thought they were, like, a mob, like, a little bit of a mob family. You know, he's got the accent. And, you know, I yeah. think they're kind of meant to be, like, mafioso. Well, in the pinstripe suit. I mean, that could be a little nod. You know? yeah. like he's, like, a made man, you know? Well, could be these coming in to take over from uh, Gris- Grissom's territory there. <laughs> just the like, yeah, yeah, could be. Oh man, just like, oh, we'll love to see in a scene of Jack Palance and Chris Walken just together, oh, just uh, just you know, oh Max, my boy, how are you going today? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> it's just those two voices <laughs> going at each other. Oh, uh, my head would would explode with joy. I mean, like the, the, it was last season. We wanted to get friggin. Eckhart and balance in a scene together because you have that well, he's on chicken Drano and then no oh, Eckhart <laughs> just, uh, a lot of fun that last season doing those voices <laughs> um, what was I going to say then <laughs> what were we talking about before that bit you've thrown me off now <laughs> oh, wait, well, the fact that yeah the, but the, yeah they're broken down into the laughter here and I do actually love uh, Walken's little touch here because she goes like oh you know for a second there you really frightened me and he goes turns away but he does that little hand dismissive hand wave like oh you like as, as if as if I would do that <laughs> it's like, I, I do love I, I genuinely actually kind of makes it funny considering like how tense the situation <laughs> just was a second ago but then yeah. he's very scary when he turns back around it's, it happens very fast and it really does sort of make you jump yeah it reminds me of, um, of Lord of the Rings when when Bilbo turns and tries to grab the ring, like, ah! 
That's the except. But then, yeah, he shoves her out a damn window. And you have this little vertigo moment, which is great, of her oh, sort of shot. falling down is one of the best shots in the movie. Do you guys, though, get the impression that there was maybe they, they were playing with the idea that during this, maybe. I always feel like Batman was originally intended to swoop in and save her at this moment. <laughs> like, that's what you expect as a viewer, isn't it? They like, say you've not seen this movie before. You're watching it. You're like, oh, Batman's going to save the day. He's going to come in. He's going to rescue her. And I like that that does not happen. It's more relevant in the next minutes, but the original script does does toy around with the, that concept, kind of, yeah. kind of, a little bit. Does he come in? Is he There's a bit in? of that coming. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in the next minute because it's, it's, it's when she's lying on the floor it's supposed to happen. Yeah. But um, And it's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> teaser <laughs> although that's the thing though uh, again in the original script this is all very different very notable difference in that all this stuff of the power plant isn't mentioned in this scene it goes straight from the sewer with Shrek and the penguin goes up uh, into oh I'm gonna make you the mayor now and then oh the penguin's like oh great and then as he's having a meeting with the penguin Selena Kyle's doing stuff in the background she kind of notices like oh he's with this weird guy and Chip is also there. And then, you know, Max corners her and he's all like, you know, what what did you see here? And she's like, oh, I didn't see anything. And then uh, it's actually kind of weird because Chip, Chip says to Max, what's the exact line? Is oh, Chip just says she's lying. And then Selena comes back with, pardon, Chip? I'm what? Which is very, like, that's a lot of backbone for the Selena Kyle we've seen in this movie to actually come back to the, the son of the boss and stuff with something like that. Well, you could say, though, like that ties into something I do keep bringing up and I'm going to keep bringing it up. The impression I get is that Catwoman is within her all along. Yeah. She doesn't change from this experience as such. It's just she's, she's had enough and, and what's within her comes out. So maybe that could be a hint towards that. Like that that's there bubbling under the surface. You could always say Selena Kyle is actually the leader of the Pink Ladies back in 1982 when she was in high school. And this is actually just a sequel to Grease 2. This is what happened to that character. What a revelation. <laughs> it's all in the same universe. The the Pink Lady cinematic universe. <laughs> but yeah, then the, you know, she in in that script she does a whole like, oh I swear I didn't see anything, Mr. Shrek. And then Max comes out with a whole like, oh, put yourself in my position. I'm a very respected man in the community. If you're fibbing about how much you've seen and heard tonight, you could run off and hurt me. And then he starts pretty much going into like I, th- this this penguin character is very very dodgy. You cannot let anyone know that you've seen me with him, which is weird considering he's about to make him the mayor. But whatever. <laughs> well, he knows that he's. Yeah. Oh, hang on. No, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> hang on. <laughs> but then, yeah, pretty much the the, the 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 scene plays out as you know. Eventually, she he just shoves her out the window, and. Um, as is, uh, I think it's in the shooting script. As well. Is the version you're talking about? Are they in a public space or? Oh no, it's it's up in the office. It's in the same. It's just that the, the penguin also happens. Like he's just after leaving when when this occurs. But I suppose that we can talk into the actual the push out the window and the the, the descent down downwards there, because yeah, that is very it's very very well done. Are, are they are they cutting for time here? Because like, is she how how high up are they? Because we saw the Shrek office at the beginning. Seemed, the indication was that it was at the mm. very, very top of the building. But this could just be like a little yeah. side office somewhere. Although it had the same kind of walls, the, the weird padded walls. That, that's his office, I think. That's a big fall. But like how many floors has she fallen? Because she does a, she goes past a couple before she hits the, the kind of canopy things. Yeah. And then I, I posit that those, like, we'll get into this, you know, much much more later. But like, she, I don't think she dies here. No, I think, we're going to argue about this. <laughs> no, that's, I think I think the reason the canopies are there, beyond just the fact like, oh, she's going through cat faces because she's about to become Catwoman and whatnot, is I think it's more to, like these these are breaking her fall. Like, so instead of her just landing and uh, like the Jack Nicholson Joker apparently shattering the sidewalk around her instead <laughs> of just but turning into mulch. <laughs> oh, no, I think she's dead. I think she's dead fully. I think she was murdered. Get her nine lives. Yeah, and it and it's thematic in like, you know, the way that that part of her has died in this moment. 
but the but yeah, but the thing is again though. So it's from that's from the top floor. She goes through four canopies, but I guess it's like she could have been falling there for like five minutes and have had to like, oh, we can't show the whole friggin' fall. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean it's a movie, you know. They gotta you gotta get to it kind of quick. She is very yeah. high up in that first shot of the fall. She's really she's very far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's huge. And this shot of her her lifeless body in the snow, I think it's it's like a beautiful shot. Oh, it's that, one of the best shots in the movie. Yeah, it's- it is absolutely. And it reminds me of that famous um, photograph of, uh, what's her name, Evelyn McHale. I think that's the reference. The way her body is sort of like her leg is out to the side. I also yeah. love um, the little punch of light on her face. So she has this kind of like angelic glow. It's really oh, nice. Yeah. It's very nice. Yeah, that's I think great. she's even missing mm. a shoe, like the like the famous photograph. That would be a, that would be amazing. Or, or even like... You couldn't have a landing on a car, I suppose. Well, yes, but no, you could. You could. Mm. Actually, if the listeners don't know, I mean, you've probably seen the photograph. It, Evelyn McHale was a bookkeeper who uh, jumped from the 86th floor of the Empire State Building and uh, and landed on a car and died. Um, but the, pho- the photograph's very famous because she, she looks, well, it's going to sound a bit misogynistic. She looks stunning. It looks beautiful. It's like, you know, she looks like she's just asleep kind of thing. But very little damage yeah, I think that's what they're referencing here, especially the way she's positioned and one shoe off. But, but again, this could be a frame from a comic book, from one of the Batman, you know, panels for sure. The way yeah. that they have sort of like these yeah. vertical lines and the perspective with the um, trash can sort of coming in. It's all very um, composed. Yeah, yeah. I, I can envisage the panel right now. Yeah, <laughs> but dude, like I, I love like the music as well, though. <laughs> like. Like, well, you call it so much music, but there's that kind of like dum as you know, as you get that stark shot of her, and it's a kind of little, just a, a little bit for emphasis. I, 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 I just like that, whatever that sound is that they put in there, and uh, and then cutting back to Shrek and his very non plus sort of like, huh, <laughs> just goes goes about the business. <laughs> On to the next one. Well, and then and then we really get into the Catwoman music theme, and and that this is when it really gets started when you see the shadow of the cat. It's just a great little sequence here, and I love the the blue, the urban blues and grays. Um, the color scheme is also just fantastic, and completely different from anything we've seen her in thus far. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll actually note as well though that there's a a little missing bit from the shooting script that the I don't know if they ever filmed it, but there is uh, again Chip Shrek is supposed to have appeared at this moment when just after Selena's gone out the window, and uh, so he comes in, and then Max does. Um, like a, a a very half-assed kind of like oh it was terrible i leaned over and accidentally knocked her out and then chip just goes she jumped she's been depressed and then max just goes yes boyfriend trouble and then chip shakes his head and says pms and then that's no! the end of the scene which is like is awful. Yeah. you can't blame it on that <laughs> oh my god we had we had things like that though in the you know they they actually toned down a lot of the the more blatant misogyny from the original draft, because we had a whole thing in the original, uh, the original draft in that meeting at the beginning with the mayor. There's supposed to be a line where Max Shrek is talking about like putting Selena over his lap and spanking her and stuff like this. So it's all like, I don't know if it was Tim Burton or it was Wesley Shrek or whoever it was just like, we can get the point across without going into something so lurid that it's just like really hitting you over the head with how blatantly misogynistic these people are and stuff so yeah i mean i get it it makes you hate them even more but it, it might be a bit too far mm. <laughs> plus the the casualness of it as, a, as an undercurrent is more true to real life really as well instead of them being cartoony it's more like this is things that people could you know it, it's it's the, the motive is underlying there but we don't have to say it because in real life yeah people wouldn't say it like it was you know but it's it's implied so yeah well, it's interesting as well that you mentioned uh, there, they say boyfriend trouble, because this is going to be depressing now. When I was researching the uh, the photo of Evelyn McHale, that, that is essentially why she, she jumped out the window. And it made me really upset, sort of, because she left a note uh, on, a, uh, on a body. It was in a, like a black pocketbook. Mm. And it said, um, I have the actual text here, which is, it's going to be very depressing. I apologize, everyone. Get a stiff drink. She says, I don't want anyone in or out of my family to see any part of me. Could you destroy my body by cremation? I beg of you and my family, don't have any service for me or remembrance for me. 
My fiance asked me to marry him in June. I don't think I would make a good wife for anybody. He is better off without me. Holy Tell my father I have too many of my mother's tendencies. Oh, my God. I've never heard that. But what a a freaking note to end on as well. It's just like, oh, you know, not only all the the devastating, just the fact that, you know, she doesn't want even her family to see her and stuff, but then, and the last moments to have a little knock on her mother as well. (laughs) It's like, Jesus. I know. That is Selena. I mean, that's a lot of this early character of her, you know, trying to Mm -hmm. fit in and have, and struggling with it, you know? Yeah. I I wonder if they did really pull from that story. It seems oh, like was... the kind of morbid thing that Tim Burton would be into. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tim Burton's probably got a print of that. Mm. <laughs> now that I hear that, that's totally like a Tim Burton thing. I was, by the mm. way, so obsessed with him when I was like, uh, I don't know, I guess like high school or something. I would um, I would like recreate his drawings. I'm sure you guys have seen like his little <gasps> sketches and stuff. I got really good at recreating his style. And my friends would have me like draw little portraits of them like in the Tim Burton style. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, he was he was a real he was like a pre emo pre emo kid. <laughs> he's he's the perfect director for a, a freaky high school kid. Like, you know, I was the same. I loved it. I mean I love him now, don't get me wrong. But then especially I really it, all the movies resonated with me. Whereas now he's gone a bit off the rails. We've we've talked about that a lot though. We won't we won't insult I'm I'm laying in wait though because i've got like a, a niece and a nephew like she's eight and he's three and it's all like one of these one of these halloweens we have to crack out beetlejuice because like i was so obsessed yes. with that movie when i was a kid and edward, like, edward scissorhands that was the one for me yeah. that i was like holy shit yeah. not that i dislike edward scissorhands because it's a great movie it's just way way too sad to watch i can't i can't enjoy it because i'm just like that's the whole bit where they set him up and stuff you know they, they make it look like he's robbed the house and all this stuff and it's like why why are they doing this why am i watching it as well it's like this is i just feel Aww. so bad for this guy <laughs> well you're supposed to feel for him that's the point yeah but but it's not to an enjoyable degree, though. It's just more like, oh, I just feel, I just feel lousy watching it. <laughs> Aww. Burton's characters, they're always, they're outsiders who are trying to fit into this, you know, sort of society, idea of societal norms. And that's why Selena is, is so, such a good match for Batman, because they're both struggling to sort of fit in. Um, yeah. Which is probably yeah. why Tim Burton wanted to do this movie. Cobblepot is probably his favorite character in this movie. It's such a Tim Burton character. Although, uh, alluding to other Tim Burton works as well, we did briefly touch upon the idea that um, the Max Shrek cat's head is supposed to be alluding to the the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland. And this is this is actually because you do they do make a point. You do see that cat head again, and Selena is going through the cat's heads on the way down. So it's kind of like is this is like Alice tumbling down the rabbit hole kind of thing. This is her Selena entering wonderland kind of or in, in, entering a new world she enters a new stage of life pretty much of or uh, or life after death as uh apparently you two you two are convinced but um well also note though quite appropriately because obviously we did say that tim burton went on to direct a version of and quote unquote adaptation of uh alice in wonderland yeah uh, but, uh, but uh michelle pfeiffer apparently uh, in one of her first jobs in the entertainment industry was playing Alice in Wonderland in uh, this uh, the Main Street Electrical Parade at Disneyland. So apparently back back in the day, late seventies, early eighties, you went to Disneyland. The Alice there was Michelle Pfeiffer. So there you go. Amazing. Yeah. That's great. Oh my god, I didn't know yeah, that. That's uh... <laughs> well. Um, in the, back in the minute, they uh, all of a sudden from out of nowhere. A horde of cats run onto the scene and start sniffing her, licking her, swarming her. Oh, I know, I always think about what Michelle Pfeiffer, like, she just had to kind of sit there and let these cats sort of go, crawl all over her. Yeah. It's, in, it's like, I love cats, but that's that's uh, pretty weird. Well, that's the thing, though, because this is, again, we'll, we'll probably end up having to cover the entire movie as a hiatus episode or something. But that, that Halle Berry Catwoman movie kind of remakes this scene, but they put much more emphasis on the first cat, where it seems to literally, a big CGI cat comes and sits on her chest. And then, like, it seems like it breathes life back into her. Like, they're very, like... Yeah. There's, there's, and don't they do some bullshit with, like, it's like an ancient Egyptian ceremony? Yeah. yeah. There's a scene, too, with um, Francis Conroy. Obviously, it was, like, you know, Ruth from Six Feet Under. Francis Conroy, but then freaking tons of stuff. She, uh, there's a, apparently some people think she's supposed to be Selena Kyle in it. Like that's, she's telling Halle Berry, oh. like, oh, this is, 
the ancient cat magics, which once brought me back to life and all this kind of stuff. But uh, no, don't, no. Like don't explain. Don't explain no. the cat magic. It's just it's it's a metaphor, Hollywood. OK, you don't have to do all this stupid like let's over explain every little thing. We're here to see Catwoman like. I I 100% agree, but you know that a modern audience would complain. Everything these days, like for instance, now last minute you were saying um, with Shrek, you don't get his backstory. I mean, look at the new Star Wars movies. Oh, you don't find out about Snoke. So, oh, it's crap. It's rubbish. <laughs> it's a it's a plot hole. Someone says that's not that's not what a plot hole is. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like most movies we we enjoy or have enjoyed through the years, these people would would hate them if they came. <laughs> oh, that's kind of weird. That he's, the, Star Wars is a weird example now because it is kind of like as uh, as Mark Kermode keeps joking the fact that Disney has it you're get you're gonna get like you remember that lamp and that one scene of A New Hope here's the story of how it got there like because they're doing <laughs> yeah. all these prequels and stuff or all these side projects although they seem to have put them, a lot of them on ice so not to go too far off on a, a tangent but I really think the smartest move for Disney would be is like have a Star Wars movie every five years because then it's like you haven't seen it in a while. It's a big deal, and you've had loads of time to build up to it and work no, on it. I... But this whole, like, but it really hit hard this year of, like, you had Last Jedi, and then not not six months later did you have another one. It's like, eh. Uh, yeah, that was a bit much for a lot of people. I mean, as a big Star Wars fan, I can cope with it, but the general they're, public they're gonna They're going to milk every single penny out of it until no one is showing up anymore. So as a Star Wars lover, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're going to watch the slow death of the <laughs> <laughs> No. See, I think, I mean, what would make me happy as the biggest nerd ever would be one every two years um, or something. Two two years is fine by me. I no, can do two. I'm very much like, no, leave, leave it long enough. Like, it's... It's one of those things. It's like you leave, you leave it for a couple of years, and then when it comes back, it's much better. You know, it's much more of like, oh, it's the thing, it's the thing I love is back. Yeah, but like they bring out a hundred novels a year, and nobody tells them to stop. Why can't they just do movies? They bring out loads of video games and whatnot. Uh, Batman brings out five billion comics every mm. day. There's also the, <laughs> the looming thing that they're finally friggin' done with the um, apparently with Doctor Who, where they've just said like the Daleks aren't in this new season. We're just oh, they're not? Them. Yeah, apparently they're just like, no, nah, we're leaving them for a while. And it's like, thank God. Hilarious. <laughs> I think like, I thought what I would do is like, well, I guess every doctor should have a, a one conflict with the Daleks just to be like, just for the actor's sake, to be like, hey, I got to fight the Daleks. But it should be like, maybe like Jodie Whittaker's last episodes. Then you bring them back. Because it could be like, hey, you haven't seen them in like three or four years or whatever. So it's like, oh my God, they're back. It's a whole big, b the threat has now been re reinvigorated and whatnot. But... <laughs> But it, here's something I never really because yeah, as I said like this shot is almost kind of remade in that Halle Berry Catwoman movie. Like they just kind of flip the sides. But my question is: Is this first cat who goes up into her face? Is this Miss Kitty, or is it just another random black cat? In a lot of the drafts of the script, it's Miss yeah. Kitty, and there's more emphasis on it being a bit magical. So I think that's where they got it for the Halle Berry Catwoman. It does look it like Miss Kitty. It looks, yeah. I, I would suggest it is, but I don't mm. know. Because I get the impression maybe she's just sort of taken Miss Kitty in. Like, it's a stray that just wandered by her window all the time. So she's like, ah, yeah, you can. <laughs> it's, it's, that's kind of making it worse, though, the fact that, like, oh, there's a stray cat, a magical stray cat that I sometimes feed when it comes in my window. And it's... Uh, she doesn't know it's magical. No, but it's just the, the idea of it, though. Again, this could be just much better. Like, just don't. It's whatever you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. Although, you know, again, well, this is going into the next minute. But so it, when Selena arrives back at her apartment, she does have a cat in tow. So I guess Miss Kitty is def. It would seem as if Miss Kitty is definitely one of those cats. So. I think it I is say. Miss Kitty, actually. I like that a lot because she's actually in all of the shots. I'm looking now. She is the first black. She's the first cat to arrive on the scene. And I love that we see her shadow first, the spirit mm. of the cat. <laughs> yes, I love that. And the cat actually has eye light. It's kind of great in this shot. So there's the wide sort of jib down onto her body. And then this profile of the cat coming up. And the cat looks up at the direction of the light. And the cat kind of catches this eye light. It's just this wonderful moment. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> I, I love anything with cats. And that, that captures the beauty of a cat right there. <laughs> It's pretty awesome. Although I especially liked another cat you see in a second, because uh, when they're all running along down out the alleyway, 
there's this one cat that does this insane jump for no reason. <laughs> Have you seen this thing? Have you noticed? It just does this mad high jump. And I mean, how high can cats jump on average? That's what I thought to myself instantly. And as a cat owner, I know that it's very high, very high. It's amazing, isn't it? So, so I had a look. I researched it. And the answer to how high a cat can jump on average is thus. <laughs> uh, a young, healthy, average-sized cat can jump about six times their length or over eight feet in a single bound thanks to their uh, powerful back leg muscles. Oh. I, I love the back legs of a cat. They look really funny, the shape of them. They're really long. <laughs> I do wonder if this this cat, the, the, that jump is its trick. Like its agent is like, you can have the cat in the movie, but he has to, he has yeah. to do the jump though. Because that's <laughs> the signature jump. The agent is Christopher Walken. You can have yes. this cat, but he must do the jump. Maybe he's like, I'll cut a deal with you. You can get the cat at a reduced rate. <laughs> it's still still higher than the other cats because it does this cool jump mm. though. That's kind of amazing. Six times its length. Yeah, it's 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 pretty impressive. I've seen some cats like jump from the floor on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> Just like woof. Yeah, my my cat, she she can jump up, but she's very clumsy. Like she would mess it up somehow and then feel embarrassed and run away. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't got a lot of grace. Uh, she's just a, a stray British what's it called? a British short hair that we that we adopted and um She's beautiful. She's stunning. Drusilla. She's in the logo Drusilla. for this season's show, so you can uh, have a look when, when that's up. Oh, it is oh, up yeah, now. It is up now. <laughs> of course. We're, we're, oh, yeah, it's because we're like near we're half hour. The into the, oh, yeah, we haven't done the logo for the new episodes <laughs> yet. Yes, she, uh, she is uh, in my arms, uh, but she has no grace to her whatsoever. If she can fall off something, she'll fall. <laughs> <laughs> guest star. She should guest star on this, on this minute. She should. We need to try and get her on the podcast now. <laughs> I was like, this cat has had more plugs on this show than like we have. <laughs> like it's every every week now. The cat gets mentioned. Well, she's got more Instagram followers than my Instagram or the oh, Batman in one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna find her right now on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's Drusilla. This, you can uh, you can look her up. I think I've plugged it already. This same thing happened two weeks ago with Briarly Bishop, where you you mentioned the cat's Instagram, and she's like, what's the, what's 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 the cat's handle? <laughs> and she went to but this then, and got but then she can. Pro- <laughs> She can promote us. It works both ways. <laughs> the, 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 the damn cat better promote us. Unless it's like, Juice Hill is like, nah, I don't want you infringing on my brand. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a strong brand identity. So, you know. Yeah, I can't have you, you bat losers <laughs> dragging, <laughs> dragging me down. <laughs> uh, I, th- I think since we've now gone off on a random tangent about cats, uh, brand image and whatnot, uh, we should probably wrap up the minute. <laughs> Unless yeah. someone has notes. <laughs> no, that's... For me personally, yeah, because the rest of the minute is very much just the cats milling around Selena Kyle, and uh, you know, hope you like that because we're going to be de- talking about it for yeah, another cats, pretty cats, much. Cats. Okay, yes. Uh, before we we depart and head into the dark night, uh, Natasha, one more time, would you like to plug anything that's uh, out or coming out, or you, just your Twitter again? Yeah, so Twitter is at Natasha Kermani, um, or you can follow my production company at Ilium Pictures, or you can follow at Dread Central Presents for updates on uh, Imitation Girl and a whole bunch of other stuff that's uh, always going on. Yeah, do make sure you do that and go and watch Imitation Girl now. We insist. In fact, stop the podcast. Just go and listen. Go and watch it. <laughs> it's a tough one to to pitch Imitation Girl because I, I can't really describe what it is. Like it's a, in a good way. It's just more the fact because the fact that it comes from yeah J- Dread Central. So like, oh, it's a horror movie. Like, no, not really. And it's like it's got like a, it's got an alien in it. And it's like, oh, so it's a sci-fi movie. No, no, it's more like it's very sort of beautiful, ethereal. It's just about life, man. Thing. thing. Yeah, it's yeah. just like. But it's definitely, definitely, it's like it's unlike anything you've you'll you'll see on, on TV tonight. Anyway, I'll tell you that. So. Well, that's what you want to hear, surely. That's that's yeah. the highest praise. Is I've not seen anything like this. Yeah, ge- genuinely, I can't even give it a genre. So it's just like, yeah, it's 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 a. It's the genre of Lauren Ashley Carter. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is uh, obviously recommended by us. Although people who follow follow Lauren Ashley Carter should know. Uh, it doesn't have incest in this one because she just <laughs> she, she she herself has constantly joked about the fact that like was it one movie she sleeps with her brother and then like, other movie she sleeps with her dad. <laughs> it's like <laughs> if she has a brand, then apparently it's incest. <laughs> oh well, let's see if we can bring that up when she does guess next time. I will. We'll try and get that into the conversation. 
And uh, in the meantime, everybody, enjoy your your Wednesday evening. And join us again on Friday because we will be back for more fun, fun, fun on that minute. And also, send us a tweet. We like to chat to our fans. Tweet us, tweet us, tweet us. Sending questions. I would say we'd answer them on the show, but we'll probably be about five million. We'll be, we'll be on three movies ahead by the time we get your questions. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, tweet us. We'll have a nice chat. And join us on Facebook as well. Join our group. You can chat about anything Batman related. It doesn't even have to be the movie. It'll be comics. Whatever you want. Anything. Send pictures in of your Batman merch and we'll all go, wow, you're cool. Uh, less sarcastically than that. <laughs> I'll genuinely like it. So yes, come back on Friday. We'll round out the week with minute thirty. Next time, feline, fine. Whether they be nuzzling in for necromancy or looking for food, eight out of ten cats agree. Miss Kyle is finger nibbling good. But is Selena's recollection of her marital relations still foggy after an eye-opening brush with some resurrecting moggies? Find out Friday, same bat pod, different bat minute. <laughs>